The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Preaxer Zemium Fungicide, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soybean School. How much fertilizer do your soybeans need for 2022? It's a question growers have been wrestling with all winter. And given crop nutrient prices, you know, it's a huge decision. How important is potassium? You know, what about nitrogen and sulfur? And what's in your soil test? What's it telling you? Do you need fertilizer at all? To help me grapple with these questions, I'm pleased to be joined by Omafra soybean specialist, Horace Bonner. Hi, Horst. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, great to be with you, Bernard. Yeah, good to see you. Hey, Horst, you've done a lot of work on fer- you know, fertilizing for maximum economic yield and certainly a big conversation this year with the state of uh, fertilizer prices. Um, you have some research results from 20 and 21 um, you know, that have built on the past work that you've done on fertility. Let's kick it off with potassium. Uh, should potassium be, um, you know, the main focus for soybean fertility programs? Yeah, right. So in in uh, the past, right, as we've looked at soybeans and nutrient uptake and what they really require for, for maximum yield, potassium has got to be right at the top of the list. And that's what the research has shown down through the decades, really. And so what we thought the last couple of years is let's try and update some of those numbers with with a uh, bigger yield potential, right? And then also bring in some of these other nutrients. So is it true that potassium is still the main uh, fertilizer that we should be thinking about with soybeans? And the answer is yes, absolutely. That's the long and the short of it. Uh, these results here that you know we're, we're looking at right now, you can see that the untreated, now these are in the at the sites with a lower testing um, soil. So I, what I did is I split the split them in half, the bottom testing and the top testing in terms of soil fertility. And look at that from Aspire, which is basically a potash product plus a little bit of boron. We got six bushels out of that, Bernard. That That's pretty awesome in the soybean world. And again, though, this is a result uh, from those sites where the soil test was was uh, on the lower side. Not horrible. If you look at those numbers, the P12, right, parts per million, and the K98, that's not a terrible number. And we were able to pick up a nice 6.1 bushels to basically a potash type of product, yeah. Now, Horace, when you look at, you know, let's talk about some other, obviously some nutrients. So nitrogen, sulfur, obviously two things that need to be on our radar screen as well. Yeah, so the the nitrogen question, I think, is still uh, one of those that needs to be focused on specific situations, right? That's where where our head is at in terms of trying to get any real response out of nitrogen, because there's there's been so much work done around the world, and even even our numbers here, you know, 2.6 bushels, there is something to a little bit of nitrogen. But the main reason we kept it in this trial is so that we'd have a comparison to ammonium sulfate and be able to pull out the sulfur question, right? That's kind of the new thing. Is sulfur something soybeans should be should be fertilized um, for? And the answer so far is there's not much to it in soybeans. You can see the, the nitrogen versus the nitrogen and sulfur, basically the same number in, in this uh, set of experiments, right? So not much to sulfur. What about some of those micronutrients now? Uh, boron, zinc, a lot of talk. Any action? <laughs> there you go. A lot of talk, yeah. So, uh, you know, the reason I'm showing you the, the Aspire number here is because there is a small amount of boron in there. And, of course, if you can broadcast it across the whole field, uh, because you need such a small amount, it's important to get it evenly distributed, and that's it's a good product for that. And, and we did compare it to straight potash. I don't have the results in here because we need a couple more years to build that data set to be able to say with confidence whether there is or isn't something to bore on. So the the the. The jury's still out on that one, Bernard, whether boron really brings much to the table. I know for sure 
that the number will not be huge, right? And can't compare it to straight potash, but maybe there's something to it. And that's why we're trying to answer the question. And then you think about, you know, well, maybe you should approach soybeans with a real good blend, including, you know, phosphorus obviously is important. And then you get into questions like zinc, manganese, right? We already talked about sulfur. And, and so that's why we have that treatment in there with a nice package of all kinds of good stuff. And at the end of the day, yes, we did get 7.1 bushels compared to six out of the straight Aspire in, in again, fields or trials where the soil test was a, a little bit lower. Right. So, yes, there's something to it. But obviously, from these numbers, the focus should still be on potassium. Yeah. So let's wrap this up with a big the big question. And, uh, you know, that's the question that growers are facing this spring. Does it make sense to apply fertilizer with high prices this spring? You know, is it as simple as uh, as using, you know, soil test values, horse? How do you approach it? Well, certainly it is um, a very solid way to think about this decision the soil test question right what you brought up that's what i mean by that the soil test of a specific field is a great indicator of whether or not you can expect a response so now what we have up here bernard are the uh, top uh soil testing sites right and they weren't through the roof but they were definitely on a different level, right? So now we've got 22 for P, 153 for K on average across those four sites. And what you'll see that uh, very quickly is that the yield response to all our treatment falls apart, right? It's in that two to 2.7 bushels. And you know, uh, that first number isn't even statistical. So you very quickly get into, well, you know, six or seven bushels. I, I can make a good argument there, economic argument. Maybe it's not the exact right rate I'm putting on, but at least I'm getting something kind of exciting. In this scenario here now, now we've dropped to basically nothing or just a hint of something. And when you consider the cost, so what I'm getting at is, hey, listen, <laughs> if, if I had a lot of acres this year to, uh, to manage and I had been able to build the soil to a reasonable level the last few years, I wouldn't put down any fertilizer, Bernard. Just forget it. Uh, hey, let's focus on other stuff and make some money. We've got some good selling prices. Don't spend it on fertilizer if if you don't uh, need to because your soil test is in a good place. Now, the other thing I got to point out, this is really cool. If you look at that uh, number there of 51.6, remember that earlier chart I showed you? That was the average of the untreated for the lower testing. Now I do nothing, but I've built the soil over the last number of years. Look at that 63, 12 bushel difference just in having looked after that soil over the past. Now this is not a perfect experiment in, in what I'm showing you today because they're different mm -hmm. sites. We do have some of them melted together and that's another conversation. But it's obvious, like, look at the potential here, Bernard, uh, if, if we built the soil. And, and uh, you know, now I'm going to get on my soapbox a little bit here. We need to, in Ontario, update our fertilizer recommendations. They're just outdated. It's as simple as that. To say that you should only fertilize for the year of is fine for nutrients like nitrogen, but for nutrients like phosphorus and potassium it's just not good enough and this is a perfect year that shows you should actually put on fertilizer when prices are low to build your soil a little bit and then in a year like this do nothing and you'll be further off ahead I, i'm sure of that well uh horse they made some awesome insights um you know looking forward and looking back and how to manage your soil this year and in the future um Tremendous stuff, sir. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Great to have you on the Soybean School. Yeah, it's been fun. We'll talk again.